let's get into the latest NFL headlines now. Get you guys set with all the latest news. The dust has relatively settled in terms of free agency. I think it's safe to say the Kirk Cousins, the Case Keenums, the Sam Bradfords of the world have all found their homes. But Mike Wallace just found his. He is now a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. It's a one-year deal worth $2.5 million, up to $4 million in incentives here. So basically replacing Torrey Smith. So there seems to be some kind of trend here with the Philadelphia Eagles getting Baltimore Ravens castaway wide receivers. First it's Torrey, then it's Mike Wallace, but whatever. Uh, Wallace is a quality player. It's a solid wide receiver number two. He's not going to steal many highlights anymore with his speed. He still has some speed. He just He's not the player he once was, but obviously he comes in to replace Torrey Smith here with Torrey heading on over to the Carolina Panthers. So signing Wallace, here's the one thing for Eagles fans out there. It counts against the Eagles compensatory pick formula because Wallace was not released by the Ravens. So that's kind of one of the bad things for Eagles fans, but still... You have Philadelphia here with a really good team going into 2018. And I'm going to talk about it once we get to the power rankings, my top 10 power rankings. But let me know right now, are the Eagles Super Bowl 53 favorites in your eyes? Hit me up in the comment section on Facebook Live and YouTube. As always, I appreciate when you guys chime in because you are as much a part of this show as I am. So... Wallace likely to be the outside receiver number two behind Alshon Jeffrey. But I would look into 2014 fourth round pick Mac Hollins as well. He's worth watching for the Philadelphia Eagles. Coming from a Ravens fan to all of you, Mike Wallace is just eh. But maybe it was Joe Flacco that made Mike Wallace look bad. Maybe that's part of the equation too. I don't know. All right, let's get to another wide receiver here who has found a home in the NFL. Terrell Pryor. Signed a deal last night, according to multiple reports, with the New York Jets. Don't have the monetary amounts for you guys at this juncture. Now, Pryor has been well-traveled, met with the Browns as well as the Redskins. Pryor joining a depth chart, including Quincy and Nunwa. You got Robbie Anderson as well in New York, but he was recently arrested and could maybe get suspended. So we'll see about Anderson, but you got Jermaine Curse as well with the New York Jets. So one-year deal with the Washington Redskins last offseason after a huge 2016 season where he saw over 1,000 yards on 77 receptions. But there you see the 2017 stats, not as good. So his career has kind of been peaks and valleys to this point. Last year was definitely a valley. 2016 was certainly a peak. But I think Terrell Pryor would fit very nicely in... Jeremy Bates' system. I am a big fan of Jeremy Bates, the offensive coordinator there for the New York Jets, and it'll be interesting to see who ends up being the quarterback in week one of 2018 for the Jets because I think they get a rookie at number three overall. They already have McCown. They already have Teddy Bridgewater. So I've said before on this program how that quarterback battle is going to be really fun to watch because I don't know who's going to win out. I mean, McCown's the bridge guy, right? I mean, he provided some stability for the Jets last year. Teddy Bridgewater has a chip on his shoulder. He's out to prove something. And then you have maybe a Josh Rosen, a Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold at number three overall going to the Jets with a lot of promise and a lot of expectations there being a top five pick. So Terrell Pryor, now a member of the Jets. I see a very real scenario here where Pryor could carve his way to becoming the number one wide receiver for this team. I mean, he might see an opportunity, and I am not really zoning in on that 2017 campaign for him as, you know, saying that that's his ceiling, that's what he can do, because obviously in 2016, he showed a lot of ability. I just think Kirk Cousins did not want to be in Washington. There was dysfunction from the top of the front office to the bottom to the water boy there for the Redskins. So, I mean, I think a change of scenario is a good thing there for Terrell Pryor. So that's the latest with him. Let's get to a trade that went down yesterday. We covered it here on Chat Sports on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. Jason Pierre-Paul heading to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, traded to the Bucs for third and fourth rounders. So the Giants get rid of JPP, and Pierre-Paul got paid. Signed a four-year, $62 million deal with the Giants last offseason. A lot of dead cap money now for the Giants because of this trade, but... 
I think the Giants are kind of looking long term here because eventually they're going to have to pay Odell Beckham Jr. And he wants like a lot of money. If you don't recall, Odell was in the headlines a few weeks ago saying he wants to get paid big time, kind of like Le'Veon Bell wants to get paid as a running back. So JPP fills a big time need for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So let's start there. The Bucs bringing in Vinnie Curry, Bo Allen as well to help bolster that defensive line. Now comes JPP, who obviously is not the same player he once was. But the Bucks finished dead last in sacks last year, guys, with just 22 sacks. That ain't good. So I think Tampa Bay's leadership knew they had to make some changes. So I think it's a really good move there for Tampa Bay. So you got Pierre Paul, Vinny Curry really didn't get the recognition he should have last year with the Philadelphia Eagles, but he's a really darn good player. And now you got to wonder, do the Giants get Bradley Chubb at number three overall? I think it's very much a possibility now with you know perhaps a little bit of a void there at the edge position so we'll see what the Giants do but Dave Gettleman reportedly got an offer he could not refuse ended up telling Jason Pierre-Paul and Pierre-Paul is kind of at peace with it because I believe he uh, lives in the southern Florida area so he's got his kids there and all that so it makes sense the Giants also brought in Alec Ogletree from the Rams to bolster their linebacking core so the Giants are certainly willing to make some changes here with new GM Dave Gettleman. So Pierre Paul, now a member of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This headline came out yesterday. So the Texans held a private workout with quarterback Lamar Jackson. And just so I can say it right here right now, he did not work out as a wide receiver. It was just in terms of quarterback play. So the Texans don't even have a first round pick, which kind of makes me put my thinking face on like mm, what are they thinking here and at the end of the day guys I feel it's just the Texans doing their due diligence in a scenario where in some crazy world Lamar Jackson could be available at the 68th pick and we're talking about 68th overall here so Louisville's pro day will be on March 29th so you can watch out for that in terms of Lamar Jackson's play but make no mistake here I don't expect the Houston Texans to get a starting caliber quarterback via the draft this year. They have Deshaun Watson. Maybe there's some uneasiness among the Houston leadership that maybe Deshaun Watson could use an insurance guy, depending on you know how his recovery goes and all that. But you get a backup quarterback via free agency if you really want to. I don't think you actually even see Lamar Jackson at 68 overall. Let me know which team is the best fit for Lamar, because I feel like this is a very open-ended question here. Some people are very sold on Darnold to the Browns, Rosen to the Giants, but Lamar, it's like, could be the Chargers, could be the Jaguars, maybe the Steelers. Like, it's a very interesting question here. And Danny chiming in, how about them Cowboys? Well, it's certainly a possibility, I guess. We could see. I'm not going to rule it out. I honestly don't know where Lamar Jackson's going to go. I've been reading through the headlines of the mock drafts, and I'll be preparing my own personal mock draft for the Cam Rogers Show once we get closer to draft time. And I'm still not sure where Lamar is going to go. Brandon chiming in, he thinks the Steelers. So I think there are many different avenues here in terms of Lamar. But the headline yesterday about him, he did work out with the Houston Texans. But I'm sure all you guys watching the Cam Rogers Show right now don't actually think he'll go there. So I mentioned free agent quarterbacks. Well, why don't the Texans get this guy again? Well, Osweiler, he visited the Miami Dolphins. So, yes, Brock Lobster is on the market, visited Miami yesterday. And, of course, you may recall Brock worked with Adam Gaze for the Denver Broncos back in the day when Gaze was over there as the offensive coordinator. I'd actually be kind of shocked if this signing doesn't go down. I think the Dolphins bring in Osweiler at some point. We may get news of it today that Osweiler signs with them. The Dolphins need insurance behind Ryan Tannehill, who's coming off a season-ending injury here. So you got Matt Moore and Jay Cutler, who are both free agents. Moore stinks, and Jay Cutler may be headed back to the broadcast booth. So with that, there is a big-time need at the backup quarterback area for the Miami Dolphins. Look, Brock Osweiler ain't very good. And... He started four games, completed just 55.8% of his passes a year ago, 6.3 yards per toss with five touchdowns and five interceptions. We know this guy's ceiling. He ain't a good deep ball thrower. He is a okay backup quarterback. 
He can fill in for a couple of games if Ryan Tannehill has the flu or whatever. But we don't expect Brock Osweiler, at least I don't, to see him in a starting role at the quarterback position ever again. But I could be wrong. Maybe Adam Gaze falls in love with him and Ryan Tannehill stinks after his injury last year. Who knows? But Osweiler visited with the Dolphins yesterday. This guy signed with the Dolphins. Mr. Frank Gore, going back home. It's a homecoming for Frank, and he visited with them yesterday. That was the original headline. Then I had to change it after the news broke that he signed a one-year deal with Miami. This guy is 34 years old and still turning, still going. Born in Miami, as you see there, went to the U, University of Miami. So Gore would, I think, bring some stability here to the Dolphins' backfield that currently features Kenyon Drake and a bunch of guys I'm sure none of you have heard of except for Miami Dolphins fans. So this is a good signing here. And you have Damian Williams signing with the Kansas City Chiefs as well, free agent formerly of the Dolphins. I'll talk about that headline later. For his career, Frank Gore, unreal. Over 14,000 yards, 4.3 yards per carry, with 77 rushing touchdowns. He's rarely hurt, still showed a lot of ability last year with Indianapolis. I think he sees an opportunity here with Miami to be a featured back. There could be a scenario, folks, where Frank Gore is back to getting 20 to 25 carries. Because you look at the Miami depth chart, I'm sorry, nobody's going to challenge this guy. So it's all for Frank for the taking. So he's back home. Sees an opportunity to be atop that depth chart, and he's still playing at a pretty darn good level. Frank Gore signing with the Miami Dolphins. Of course, we want you commenting on the Cam Rogers show. We be sure, we'll be sure to show them throughout the broadcast. Colton chiming in. What is Miami doing? They don't want to win. Colton, I don't know, man. I mean, I kind of like this signing with Frank Gore. I mean, you look at the depth chart there at running back. You guys lost Damian Williams. By the way, I'm assuming you're a Miami Dolphins fan. Maybe you're not. But Damian Williams is gone. Kenyon Drake, do you have a lot of faith in him to be the starting running back? I think Frank Gore will provide some stability there. Yeah, I mean, you have to look at the offensive line and Mike Pouncey moving on out. And there are a couple other portions of that defense that you can kind of zone in on. That secondary needs some help. But I think Miami is actually doing okay. They, I wouldn't consider them a loser in free agency just yet. Unless, you know, something crazy happens the rest of the way. But there you go, Miami Dolphins. Uh, grabbing Frank Gore there as the running back. Appreciate the comment. Keep those comments coming on the Cam Rogers Show. Let's check in with Sam Darnold. So an AFC executive said Sam Darnold is going number one overall in the 2018 NFL Draft. And that, according to Albert Breer there of Sports Illustrated, an AFC executive told him this. And Darnold recently threw at his pro day, of course, despite the rainy conditions, looked pretty darn good doing it. So a large Cleveland Browns contingent was present for this pro day. GM John Dorsey, head coach Hugh Jackson, offensive coordinator Todd Haley, all present. So with the Browns selecting number one overall, I think it makes sense for these big players in the front office and the coaching staff to show up to these pro days because you have the pickings of everybody in the entire draft field, if you will. So why not do your ultimate homework and see what Sam Darnold can do. I think Darnold is the fit for the Cleveland Browns, more so now than previously thought. I have been mocking him to the Browns for some time, but I'm even more confident in this kid going number one overall now. I think Tyrod Taylor is nothing more than a bridge quarterback for this guy. I really believe that. And maybe Tyrod starts half the games next season, depending on the, the, the development of Sam Darnold here. So Tyrod's not the answer. I know he's already been named the starting quarterback, but that's coaching speak, folks. All right, don't buy into that. Let me know in the comments section, who's getting drafted number one overall? I want to hear what you guys think. Maybe I'm way off thinking Sam Darnold is going number one. Certainly let me know. Could it be Saquon that goes number one overall? Am I crazy to think that? Uh, you could see maybe Josh Rosen go number one to the Browns, but I don't think he's the greatest fit. Maybe... Baker Mayfield, that would be an upset special if you're a gambling person out there. Maybe you throw a few bucks on Baker May Mayfield going number one overall, but I don't see it. But keep those comments flowing. We got James. Darnold has bust written all over him. James, you should tag Tom Downey in the comment section because he would love to see that. He's not a big fan of Sam Darnold. And James, I get it. There's a lot of work to be done with him. It's going to be a bit of a project. He's not as polished 
as maybe a Baker Mayfield in my eyes. But I think the Browns would make the right choice to get Sam Darnold. Now, they have to coach him up properly. So the pressure is on Todd Haley, John Dorsey, maybe not so much John Dorsey, but definitely Todd Haley and head coach Hugh Jackson to coach this guy up. So we'll see what happens. Sam Darnold uh, apparently going number one overall, according to an AFC executive. All right, next news here. Let's go to the secondary. EJ Gaines, currently a free agent. He recently visited the Jets. So the Jets have certainly shown a willingness to improve their secondary, right? They're bringing in Tremaine Johnson. They re-signed Morris Claiborne. They got a couple of good young safeties back there too. Jamal Adams, Marcus May. I think the Jets have an opportunity to have a really low-key good secondary in the AFC. EJ Gaines had a really solid campaign a year ago. Came out of nowhere too. Pro Football Focus graded him inside the top 15 in terms of cornerbacks a year ago. Now, that was just one year, so the sample size is small, talking about EJ Gaines here, but he has an opportunity to remain in the AFC East, play his former team, Buffalo Bills, guaranteed twice a year. Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. He does have a visit with the Cleveland Browns today, so keep an eye on EJ Gaines news. He may make his decision today after the Browns visit. Maybe he says, you know what, I'll stay here in Cleveland and sign with you guys, or you know what, I'm going back to New York and I'm going to sign with the Jets. If the Browns get EJ, I think it'll be a really nice signing considering McCoury moved on to the New England Patriots. So EJ Gaines visited with the Jets and then has a visit today with the Cleveland Browns. That's the latest with him. How about Johnny Manziel? He was throwing at a pro day yesterday. We have some footage. We'll show it to you, of course. And it was the first time Manziel has thrown in front of an NFL personnel since the Cleveland Browns waved him in March of 2016. There he is, University of San Diego's Pro Day. <laughs> He's looking pretty darn good. He's uh, throwing some pretty solid ropes there. I don't know about you guys. I think this guy is ready to play. Comeback season, S-Z-N. That's how you spell it. Uh, Johnny Manziel, of course, will be playing in the Spring League next month. He is set for training camp next week. I'm telling you, the video looks pretty darn good. I'm buying in. Manziel will play for the South team and will line up under center for two games on April 7th and April 14th. So we'll have some more highlights for you guys out there in terms of Johnny Manziel playing in the spring league. But a comeback, we'll see. All right, let's check in with another quarterback here, Andrew Luck. He will be returning to workouts, team workouts, with the Colts next month in April. And this is like... A headline because we haven't really heard positive stuff recently surrounding Andrew Luck because of that injury. So GM Chris Ballard has said that Luck will be participating in these workouts. And according to Ballard, Ballard the Colts will, quote, ease Luck back into the offseason training process as he recovers from that shoulder injury that, of course, kept him out of the entire 2017 season. So Chris Ballard apparently has no doubts that Andrew Luck will be good to go week one of 2018. I understand the nervousness for many Colts fans out there. I'm nervous as a regular football fan because I want this guy back on the football field and playing at a high level because I know he can. And hopefully the Colts, who have not been big-time spenders so far in free agency, find a way to have a killer draft and continue to bolster the interior of that offensive line, bringing back Jack Muhort, very important there. Ryan Kelly coming back from injury at center. But they got to protect Luck. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind, Andrew Luck has to be the priority, and I think he is. So he's going to work out with the Colts next month. Good news there. How about the Cowboys? Cowboys fans, you guys have been complaining that Dallas has been inactive in free agency. Here's some news. Deontay Thompson now a member of the Cowboys. It's a one-year deal worth $2.5 million with a $1 million signing bonus. 27 catches, 430 yards, and a touchdown in 11 games for Deontay last year. He finished in total uh, 38 catches for 555 yards and two touchdowns for the year, which is easily a career-best campaign for him. Those 27 catches... 430 yards were with the Buffalo Bills. He actually led the Bills in receptions a year ago with 27. Talking about wide receivers. Unbelievable. So Dallas met with both Deontay and Alan Hearns the other day. Clearly Deontay was the better choice, monetarily speaking. I'm sure Alan Hearns was more expensive. And then there's this uncertainty around Des Bryant. He's going to be on the team in 2018. I don't think people really need to worry about that. But maybe after the fact, 
looking into the 2019 offseason, the future of Des Bryant very much in question. Now, Cowboys fans and NFL fans in general, are the Cowboys free agency losers? Give me a heart for yes, they did absolutely nothing. Give me a like if no, they're fine, you're content, you're all right. You got Deontay Thompson and uh, maybe a fullback via the trade. So yeah, there you go. Let me know in the reaction poll on Facebook Live as well as YouTube. All right, so I mentioned how Damian Williams found a new team. He's going to the Kansas City Chiefs. It's a one-year deal worth $1.5 million. Expected to miss most of the offseason due to shoulder injuries. So Chiefs fans, I'm kind of curious about this move. So you got Kareem Hunt, Spencer Ware, and Sharkandrick West, friend of the program here. I'm not really sure the motivation behind Damian Williams, although I did some more reading. And it seems like this guy is a great personality. A really awesome locker room guy, enthusiastic player. Perhaps that was part of the draw. I was reading up on some tweets and some thoughts from local Dolphins beat reporters, and they were talking about how Damian Williams was such a fun interview, fun guy to talk to. He's a pretty good receiving back. I'm not so sure he's a guy that's going to get a lot of carries for the Kansas City Chiefs, maybe more of a depth option for them there. But Damian Williams heading to KC. And then finally, the Patriots have retained one of their tackles, at least. Lee Adrian Waddle is coming back on a one-year deal. He's likely going to be Nate Solder's successor. Solder getting paid big time by the New York Giants in free agency. Waddle has experience at right tackle and left tackle. He did have a pro football focus grade of 47.5, which put him at 64th among qualifying tackles.